<laughs> anyway, before we talk all things Rangers, folks, yeah, as you can see, the little ticker below, we've got the website back up and running. You'll be pleased to know after our problems yesterday due to the, uh, the server being down. So it's back up and running, and you can take advantage of our great offer once again. If you sign up now, uh, you just pay £2, and you get two months' worth of coverage. Just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe. And as you can see, the One Football app is our uh, sponsor for these videos. It is your one-stop shop for all your footballing needs. If you're a Rangers supporter, then you can get notifications to your phone of all the latest signing news, everything that's coming out of Ibrox. You can keep up to date there. Uh, you can keep an eye on fixture lists and, and what have you. Um, as well as Rangers, uh, there's so much uh, in-depth Scottish football news and also down south across the border uh, as well. And you can keep uh, an eye on what's happening Further afield uh, across in the continent and the, the big European uh, competitions as well. The good news is it's totally free, won't cost you a penny, and it's available for iPhone and Android users. So go and download it, folks. It download uh, the One Football app. Uh, lots of people saying great things about it. Um, okay, let's uh, talk uh, Rangers, Johnny. In fact, what we'll touch on first of all is uh, the breaking news in yesterday's show. Um, the BBC had apologised for. Um, uh, pretty much substandard reporting at times uh, of Rangers and they have resolved their long-standing dispute so the BBC uh, will now be able to cover Rangers games once again um, you're writing a piece for the website on this Johnny uh, a lot of Rangers fans of course are uh, steadfast in their feelings towards the BBC and uh, understandably so um, what, after time to reflect and, and take the news in what's your What's your feeling? Yeah, I think um, ultimately, and I don't know how popular this is going to be, but I, I think this is a, a, a good move. There's a lot of Rangers fans who rely on the BBC for their, their coverage. Uh, they're paying for that coverage. And I think it's, it's, it's unfair that for the last seven years, Rangers fans have had to um, really accept a lesser package um, than than the likes of Aberdeen, Hearts, and Celtic. It's it's not been uh, right. It, it needed to be resolved. You can't continue to fight against the world forever. And I think, uh, given the BBC have moved to make such a frank apology uh, about the situation, I think you have to put your hands up and say, right, uh, now is the time then to move on. Um, I think. Going back, there's been some issues with the ban. You know, for, for example, I understand that. You know, going back to the Stephen Gerrard's days, there was incidents where people down south of high profile. I think one of them was was Alan Shearer wanting to come up and interview Stephen Gerrard for the BBC, and, and that couldn't be facilitated because of this ongoing situation. Something I don't think uh, Stephen Gerrard was all, altogether too happy about, um, and ultimately. You've 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 got to look towards resolution and and can in conflict situations if you can get it if there's any way, and I think ultimately that's that's what's happened. You can't uh, say anything other than Rangers have kind of had a total victory given they, they've dug their heels in and, and you see that the kind of statement that's gone out yesterday. Um, I know there's a lot of um, concern and questions about individual reporters, and but I think. From from my understanding, and certainly the way we, uh, you know, apply for our press access and things like that, you, you're doing it on an individual basis rather than an org organisational basis. BBC are uh, will be the same. So, so I, th I don't think there'll be a return for some of the people um, in Ibrox that we've been getting we've been questioned about. Um, but time will tell on that one. Uh, I, I just think that. This is a this is a good move and it allows Rangers fans um, who rely on the BBC uh, to get their content from them. Someone like, for example, you know, if you if you've got a, a dad, for example, who's who's in his seventies, maybe doesn't go on the internet so much, um, you know, he he probably like to see Giovanni Van Bronckers after the match explaining his thoughts on the game. And that's something that will now return to to sports sound, uh, sports scene, sorry, and sports sound, and, and I think that can only be uh, applauded and, and a good thing. So. So that that's my take on it, Derek. We were kind of we broke the news as we were on on live yesterday, so we didn't really get a chance to respond because we hadn't kind of processed 
the um the, the 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 statement that came down. Ian Ross is asking, did Michael Stewart apologize as well? He did, yes. He put a he put a tweet out um of apology and Rangers acknowledged that later in a statement um that they put out on Twitter. Again, a lot of this is if you're not on Twitter, you're not really going to get the uh, the full depth of actually what's happened here because it seems to all play out on Twitter because that's where journalists are. Yeah. But yeah, Michael Michael Stewart has apologized. So and that that's been part of the uh, the situation with the BBC. And there's no doubt about that. And 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 that's now been uh, uh, solved due to that apology. So yeah. yeah, that's the situation as it stands. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a, a comment I wanted to touch on, uh, Johnny. Um, Scott Wilder uh, states this. I'll put this to you as a journalism coverage on all Rangers matters from Rangers Review is second to none in my opinion. Well, thank you. Uh, could I make a request that uh, our reporters on match days provide a live text report from matches? Um, is that something that uh, is in the, in the works, would you say, or you could see happening? We do, we do a lot already, don't we? So Yeah, Scott Welder, um, again, I, I'll tell you the, the problem with this, Derek. Can you take that down? Because you, people can also do it. <laughs> um, the problem with that is we, we tried match blogs to do that. But fundamentally, we just kind of feel like it, it, it takes up a lot of a journalist's time and they're not watching the game. So we'd rather provide insight. And there's a lot of other places doing doing those. I, I get that people would want to get their uh, all their content from the Rangers Review, but um, baby steps. You know, there's only three of us, uh, four of us uh, working on the site at the moment, um, and it's just one of those situations whereby um, we, we probably think we'd rather be watching the game and able to give you the insight of what's happening on the game tactically. Um, rather than kind of like typing away minute by minute reports, which is honestly, I've done it for a long time in my career, is very distracting. And that's why sometimes, you know, when journalists are talking, and I can include myself in this before anyone gets upset, you know, when journalists are talking about your club uh, or a game involving your club, sometimes you're a little bit like, did they watch the same game as I did? And the answer is they didn't because they spent about 50 to 30% of the game looking at their laptop, typing it up. Yeah. Um, so I, that's why you know I really encourage the guys at the Rangers Review to do the minimum possible during the game, so they're getting a a full picture of actually what's happening on the pitch to give us a little bit extra insight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk uh, transfers then. Let's move on from the uh, the BBC news uh, yesterday. Um, big talk yesterday. Uh, J- uh, Johnny was uh, Ridvan Yilmaz from uh, Besiktas, of course. Calvin Bassi. His move to Ajax uh, was rubber stamped, and he is now a, officially an Ajax player. And we've got to say, the money Rangers have made from that is quite astounding. The uh, whole package is 27 million euros, and they've got a 10% sell on fee as well. Uh, I think it won't be long before he's been snapped up for even bigger money, and Rangers will be receiving a, a, a bit of a payoff as well with regards to that. But they've wasted no time in trying to identify. A replacement. He's a left back, 21 year old uh, Turkish international in his final year of his contract. Rangers want this player, uh, Johnny. He's he's uh, he's wanted by a host of clubs. Frankfurt were, were wanting him before, but, but they couldn't agree a, a fee. Uh, Tottenham have been linked with him as well as have uh, Torino in Italy. Um, Rangers uh, have put in what they believe the player is worth based on the fact he's in the final year of his deal. Baziktas basically want more, and there's a, a bit of a uh, a negotiating to be done to get this deal over the line, but from all accounts, we've done a scouting report on him. He looks uh, a tidy wee player. Yeah, um, Craig Vickers, our scouting writer, is is currently uh, banging away, uh, finishing off his piece. But it's safe to say he was extremely excited. Now Craig is kind of like a, a, a quite a balanced guy; he doesn't get up nor down really about anything. But when I spoke to him yesterday, he was pretty giddy at the prospect of Yomaz <laughs> arriving at Rangers. I phoned him up and said, what's the boy like? He said, very, very, very good. Which is basically as about as much as a, of a rave as you're going to get out of Craig on these situations. So he really was impressed by what he saw. So keep an eye out on his Twitter page and obviously the Rangers review because that should be up by about 11 o'clock at the latest. Uh, it really is a deep dive. Spent all day yesterday looking at this guy and what he can offer. So I'm really, really, really excited about the potential of this one. If this can get over the line, I think this could be a terrific move. 21, 
you know, Turkish players um, sometimes have had a history of um, struggling a little bit in terms of uh, moving away from their, their home country. Yeah. Um, but I think more and more recently, um, they've shown quite a lot of adaptability in general. Uh, and we know that Rangers had an absolutely fantastic Turkish player uh, in the Advoca era in, in the form of Tugay. Um, the fact that Tugay couldn't get a game for that Rangers midfield at the time regularly tells you everything yeah. you need to know because Tugay was top, top drawer. And he um, should have that's so that was, a, that was an advocate ball. blunder. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, selling them for a million pounds. Uh, people at Blackburn still can't get over that, can they? Um no, they, if, every player I speak to I ask them who's their best player if they've played with them, they all say two guy. Yeah. They all, everyone says two guy. He was that good and uh, uh he smoked about 40 a day as well, which is uh, quite incredible. But um what a player he was. Um if he can be anywhere near as good as two guy, then Rangers will be on to a winner if a deal can be struck. Um but yeah, uh, I think uh, supporters getting quite uh, enthused by uh, the prospect of Yilmaz uh, coming to uh, the club. I think two guys only played as a sweeper once, if I recall. Me, yes, it was it was like that game in Monaco. We yes. just won one 0 in Monaco. An advocate pulled out the hat, a back five with two guys between the centre halves, and he was yeah. absolutely outstanding. He had a proper worldie that day. But I don't yeah. think he played there that often. Certainly not to my memory. But I mean. I'm getting a bit, uh, my memory's getting a bit flaky about games 20 years ago. But uh, yeah. yeah, what a player he was. But he was more of a sort of central defensive midfielder who who would kind of metronomically control the pace and flow of a game from oh, a defensive midfield player. Um, Pirlo-esque, I would say. A great passing range. He was he was just terrific, and uh, yeah, we're seeing having a lot of people coming back saying how much they love two guy, and uh, I think yeah. we're both big fans. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you'll, 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 anyway, you're mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just touch on because Luke Gibson makes a point. Who will be the next player that we develop like Bass and Sellon for big money? Before we touch on that question, I just wanted um, somebody mentioned earlier uh, Bassie's emotional farewell. He put up on his, his Twitter account yesterday. A uh, fantastic uh, piece. I'll just I'll just quickly read it. He said, uh, "Where do I start? Firstly, I just want to thank God for giving me this opportunity." To play for a club that is as historic and amazing as Rangers, I want to thank the manager and the coaching staff for the trust they put in me and for helping me to develop both as a player, a person and as a player. I want to thank my teammates for all their help. I came here to play football, but I am leaving with brothers for life. I want to thank all the fans. You were truly incredible. I've never experienced anything like Ibrox. You will always have a place in my heart. Once a year, always a year. Finally, I wish uh, the team all the best and plenty of success. For the future hashtag, uh, we are the people. Um, lovely little message from Calvin Bassey yesterday, Johnny. Wish him all the best. Who's going to be the next Calvin Bassey? That is the big question. Um, I've got to say that the work that Giovanni van Bronckhorst and his coaching staff uh, have done uh, to bring Calvin Bassey's game onto a level where clubs are spending record fees to bring him in. Um, that bodes well, doesn't it? Um, in terms of players that, that could possibly uh, be next up in that in that line, um, I'm thinking yeah. Alex Lowry, Leon King, that sort of that sort of player. Similar. Well, I think age. the next player um, that's, that that could move um, is Glenn Kamara. Yeah, there is strong interest in Glenn. Um, people have talked about Galatasaray. And uh, although there wasn't a bid at the time when that was reported, I know that that interest was was real. Um, here's here's my kind of take on Glenn Kamara. Um, Derek, I think he's got three years left. You might want to check that. It might be two years now, but I think I think it's three after he signed his new contract last season. Pretty sure he's got three years left. I I think Glenn Kamara is undergoing a bit of a change that will seriously benefit his career. I, I saw flashes again against West Ham of a guy that if he's used and developed as an eight and if you can harness his ability I think he could be a really good eight I mean he's got quick feet he's got an explosive burst to get past players he can drive at defenses without losing the ball the ball sticks to him he's got a good pass I just think if 
if you can focus on that element of his game, I, I think there's a real there's a real improvement in the player there. You know, you can you can play at that base of midfield. But if you can add this extra bit, then wow, what a player he could be. I, I know Gio really likes him as a player. So the question is, do you accept a bid if one comes in? Um, I think long term going Kamara sees his future in the Premier League. But Galatasaray, you know, it's a big club. Everyone knows uh, Istanbul is a wonderful city to live in. And if there's a a proper deal that Rangers can get their teeth into and a, a proper bid, then maybe they'll consider it because they do have good good cover there. Um, but it's one of those. Um, and, and until there's tangible interest. Um, with bids, I don't. I, it's, it's all speculation. Um, but if you really push me, Derek, if you really push me, I would say of the next players that could leave, I think it's more likely that that Glenn Kamara leaves than say Ryan Kent or Alfredo Morelos, yeah. who I know the club are working in the background, beaving away on, chipping away at over new deals. Yeah, yeah, yes, they certainly are. Um... His contract is up in three years' time, yep, so it's, it's not a priority to get him uh, signed up for... Uh, That's what I mean. If you could get Van Bronckhorst doing what he did with Bassi for a whole season, like br- bringing the best out in him. I know it's a couple of people saying he doesn't score enough goals. That's true, guys, and I t- you're right, you're right, but just as a caveat, just to throw something out there, there's times when he, he finishes brilliantly. Like, what about the, the RB Leipzig semi-final? What a finish that was. I mean, yeah. that's not a player who's yeah. incapable of putting the ball in the back of the net, is it? Yeah. You know, so I wonder if it's because he's not getting himself in those positions as opposed to he doesn't have quality to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. That's what we'd have to find out. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, um, you, I don't know if there's an issue with your mic. Sometimes it just sort of dips in and out. But um, Right, okay. Uh, yeah, but, but we hear you for the most part, but I was just dipping in and out just uh, just there. But um, let us know if you're having problems here and, and Johnny there. But yeah, totally agree. Um, and we've seen that against Blackpool as well. It was it was clearly noticeable. He was playing further up the pitch, uh, just behind uh, Cholak. Uh, and you do wonder if uh, Van Bronckhorst has plans for him to be more of a, an attacking outlet. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if his role does change. I know people say, oh, you, you can't play a Kamara, Lundstrom and Jack midfield three. I don't necessarily think that is a midfield three. I think uh, what we've seen is Kamara playing further up and supporting the, the front players more. And who knows? It may, it, it may be a, a move that, that benefits him. Um, and it remains to be seen, like you say, Johnny, that there is uh, interest there from clubs all over the place in Glen Kamara. Uh, it's never gone away. Uh, and it remains to be seen if he'll be a Rangers player come the start. Uh, well, the start of the season, of course, is just over a week away, but come the end of the transfer window, uh, that is a big question, isn't it? But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, that's for sure. Um, and just on this point to, from Tommy Craney, um, are they a dodgy mob for getting your wages for Galatasaray? Well, FIFPRO, the organisation that looks after players worldwide, put out a statement a week ago saying, don't go to Turkey. So make it that what you will. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I, I don't think it's going to it's going uh, to materialise. To be honest, uh, Johnny's mic is fine. I just need to clean out my ears. Says uh, Scott McIntyre. So uh, <laughs> to apologise, uh, Andrew. Say the Turkish league's a, a mess right now. Um, let's touch on some of the, some other points that are uh, coming in um, just now. Uh, of course, the match on Saturday, Johnny, uh, against Spurs. Big game, big test. We touched on it briefly yesterday. Antonio Conte side uh, coming up for uh, what would be the final, well, what was meant to be the final one-up game, but Rangers playing a bounce game against Queen's Park on the Sunday uh, as well. But everything geared up now. You'd imagine we'll see the likes of Ben Davis uh, and Malik Tillman in that game against Spurs. Um, they'll get a run out of a you know, You'd like to think in front of the the Ibrox supporters. Van Bronckhorst suggested that um, in the press, or sort of hinted that, that that Davis certainly would get a would get a chance. So it'll be good to see Derek. I'm really looking forward to the game as much as anything else. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to just seeing how Rangers cope against a, a really top level 
uh, Premier League side. I know Spurs have, have gone out and, and splashed the cash in a way that Daniel Levy hasn't allowed in previous years. And Antonio Conte is someone I consider to be in the top three managers in that league. And that's a real compliment because there's some genuine world-class operators. I think he's an unbelievable manager. Tactically, incredibly switched on. Gets the players working so hard for the team. Um, we discussed the other day about the training methods of Conte. And uh, it's one thing that you always hear about is that he is, players find this training quite boring because it's very motorized it's very monotonous it's doing the same things over and over again but their pain is whoever's watching them's gain because they become very very rigid in terms of the adherence to the structure and the structure is always effective so you know in the same way that Michael Beale and Stephen Gerrard manage with Rangers um and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that pans out and hopefully hopefully talking to Antonio Conte after the game would be be a cracker because I'm going, so I'm really looking forward to posing him a question because, uh, yeah, he's a guy that I've admired for a long time, so it'd be good to meet him. Yeah, it certainly will be. Only touching this point from uh, Hamish Brown, uh, he says, uh, this is uh, alluding to uh, Curtis Woodhouse. He contacted me yesterday, folks. It's just a it's, he's got a group that starts Monday, it's a, it's a mental health and well being group, um, improve your physical and mental well being. Uh, and he's got just got an offer on uh, for Rangers supporters. I'm not too sure when he's going to announce it, but it's a, a good cause uh, and what have you. And it's, it's certainly something that I'm sure the Rangers supporters will be interested in. Uh, big Rangers fan is Curtis. Um, still gutted he never got that move when Advocat was was in charge. I remember it well when he was at Sheffield United at the time, um, but it never materialised. But he, he's never had his uh, support for the club. But yeah, if, if he's, he's got a group online, folks on Twitter, you can follow it. It starts Monday. Uh, and he's about to announce just a, a little uh, uh, offer for, for Rangers supporters, and it's uh, a lot of the money is going to a good cause as well. And I'll let him uh, uh, announce that in due course. Um, a few but, excitement, a uh, bit of excitement there with Twitter uh, with that post, did you, Derek? People thinking it was transfer news. Yeah, a lot of people saying that we're signing Gaza and, and all this sort of stuff. Uh, people getting carried away, so. Uh, I don't want to bust his bubble. Curtis will announce it in due course, but uh, yeah, people get... <laughs> he likes to big it up. Uh, um, so it's, 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 a, it's a good little offer for Rangers supporters. I'm sure they'll be interested in it. And like I say, the money going to a good cause uh, as well. So, um, But it's, 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 we're not signing uh, Cristiano Ronaldo or anything like that, I don't think. <laughs> uh, Jeff Smith uh, asked Conte how... Uh, along the, the hair plugs last, yeah. Sure. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Thanks. <laughs> I think I might give that one a miss, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's 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 pretty he's old, he's old school, isn't he? But he, like you say, John, he's one of the, the, the greatest uh, coaches in the world. I'm quite surprised actually that he's still at Tottenham, but he was quite vocal last season, wasn't he, in terms of not being backed and, and basically laying down the law to Daniel Levy to. Um, match his ambition, but um, they certainly spent a bit of money in the summer. Yeah, again, it just shows you how smart he is because he's been given the keys to the kingdom in terms of the spending power, and, and part of that will be because Daniel Levy is in a situation where he couldn't really afford to lose another manager after what's happened with uh, Nuno and, and Mourinho previously, yeah. um, and obviously Pochettino before that, so um, he was in a situation where he had to back him, and Conte's smart, and he knows that. Um, you know, I was just thinking, actually, Derek, on that hair plugs thing. Um, Josh is coming with me. Wow, maybe he could be the one to ask that question. I think, I think so. Delegate, <laughs> delegate that question to him. I think that's good management there. Um, Sunny Boy says, "What time's kickoff on Saturday? 3 p.m. I think, Johnny. Is that right? Yeah, 3 p.m. kickoff." Um, and I love this. It blows my mind that folk watching the, the show from worldwide. Uh, Nate yeah. gets in touch, watching live from San Diego, California. Oh, yeah. using the new left Beautiful. back. We touched, we touched on that, Nate. Um, Yuma as a club are interested in bringing him in from Basitas, but there's some way to go uh, before that one uh, materialises. Um, I think that'll do us there. Um, thanks to everyone for getting in touch with the programme as ever. It's very much appreciated. Remember, if you've not taken advantage of the website yet, uh, if you pay £2, pounds, you get two months worth of coverage, head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. 
Um, and I believe it's our, our, our birthday here on YouTube as well, Johnny. I think that the first show that we've done. Yeah, we're, we're a bit confused by this, Derek. I'm not, we're not going to lie, are we? Um, we, we thought we started on the day that we started. So perhaps there was some sort of issue with YouTube. But yeah, listen, guys, incredible growth that we've had on YouTube. Um, we're now up to nearly 7,000 followers. What I would ask is if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, if you like our content, the way you can help us grow, the way you can help us on YouTube is just to hit subscribe. Um, that gives us a real uh, ability to get the, the the videos that we do out to other people. And you know, this season we've got a massive focus on on video. We'll be doing a lot more interviews. Whenever there's new signings, we'll have interviews with people close to them who can tell you about them. We'll have interviews with ex players. Of course, we'll be talking to Giovanni Van Bronckhorst at the press conferences. Um, there's a Rangers Media Day coming up on the 20th Monday. next week. Yeah, next week. So can't can't remember which which date it is, but we'll be speaking to four players. So we'll have four videos from that. Um, so yeah, we've we've got loads and loads of content coming. So guys, if you're watching the channel and if you like it, if you don't subscribe, please do that one thing that you can do, which is to sus- hit the subscribe button, and it's a major major help for us. Yeah, yeah, and like Aldo says, it's great to have your support. You guys make the channel, so thank you very much, and, and please continue to do so. Um, okay, that'll do us there, folks. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow to uh, look ahead more in detail at that friendly against Spurs, but until then, enjoy the rest of your th-